Hey everybody, welcome to the Market Board. My name is Dave and today we're taking a look at additive manufacturing or as the kids like to call it, 3D printing. Analysts from the additive manufacturing industry predict that 3D printed electronics are likely to be the next high growth application for product innovation with market size forecasted to reach $2.4 billion by just 2025. Scrounging through my ARC daily update emails and recent comment requests, I actually found 3D printing stock Nano Dimension Stock Tecker NNDM. Now let's set the scene. Traditionally, electronic circuitry is developed through a back and forth process that involves design, trial, and error in third-party manufacturer outsourcing. NNDM believes that the traditional process for developing complex and advanced electronics is actually outdated. And until now, additive manufacturing technology has been unable to offer a solution for electronics market, mainly because of the difficulty of printing multiple layers of electronically conductive materials at a resolution that is suitable for professional electronics. Nano Dimension are the first to develop an integrated solution for additive manufacturing of electronics, with their Dragonfly LDM precision system for additive manufacturing manufacturing of printed electronics using a proprietary liquid nanoconductive and dielectric inks that are designed specifically to print multi-layer circuitry and 3D electronics. Now I'm just going to be honest with you guys, I don't know what a ton of that meant, but that's because I'm not an engineer, but I'll tell everyone right now that I am always down to clown with some nanotechnology. So the next question we need to ask is really who is NNDM and what do they do specifically? And what we find out is that they describe themselves as being a leading additive electronics provider that believes that their own flagship proprietary Dragonfly LDM system is the first and only precision system with the ability to make multi-layer circuit boards known as PCBs, radio frequency antennas known as RF, sensors, conductive geometries, and molded connected devices for rapid prototyping through additive manufacturing. They are currently targeting the growing market for smart electronic devices that rely on printed circuit boards, connected devices, RF components and antennas, sensors, smart products, and even the internet of things. NNDM states in their latest annual report that they have a four-pointed growth strategy they plan to employ. Starting with increasing sales, their plan is to advance their commercialization efforts and infrastructure to include increasing sales manpower, which is a fancy way of saying they're going to hire staff. Next up, they're going to try to increase the amount of applications their products are usable for by working in collaborations with customers in the fields of automotive, aerospace, medical devices, and even defense. Nano Dimension plans to form alliances with industry leaders to collaborate with companies in the fields of design and manufacturing in order to expedite the adoption of technology by the market. And finally, they plan to capitalize on their nanoconductive and dielectric inks by offering them as a supplemental product to their Dragonfly LDM system. Now, despite that Nano Dimension does have an ambitious strategy laid out, they will face strong competition in the ways of traditional prototype development of PCBs. Additionally, they will have to compete against companies already providing 3D printing services that have a large customer base. And finally, they may have to fight against future competition that rises to technology developments. At the time of this recording, shares are trading at about $7.90 a piece with a market capitalization, according to Finviz, of about $2 billion. Now let's turn to their offerings and break down their product catalog to see what exactly makes NNDM so unique. So starting with their flagship product line, the Dragonfly LDM, which is used for additive manufacturing of printed electronics. It can specifically print sensors, conductive geometries, RF devices, antennas, professional multi-layer PCBs, and molded connected devices for rapid prototyping and custom additive manufacturing. The LDM Precision System is the first and only system, according to Nano Dimension, that is customized specifically to print multi-layer PCBs for advanced electronics. The Dragonfly Dragonfly is actually designed to allow users the ability to print ready-to-use electronics and connected devices in-house within just a few hours. And Nano Dimension lays out their own possible applications of the product to include aerospace, smart cars, IoT connected products, RF components, and encapsulated sensors for both military and civil applications. NNDM lays out the three major benefits you get by using their Dragonfly LDM over any other product. First, you get in-house prototypes with your low volume production, allowing users efficient, quick, available, accessible, and immediate product solution. Secondly, 
information security and professional secrecy. You no longer have to outsource, which means you no longer have to unnecessarily compromise the security of sensitive and confidential information. And thirdly, and this might be the most important, they believe they're an industry first and that they're a pioneer and a leader in their own industry and they're not aware of any company in the global electronics market that currently offers a 3D printer that prints professional grade smart parts. The second product worth mentioning on their catalog, I believe is their conductive ink. Using advanced nanotechnology, they found a way to develop a liquid ink that contains nanoparticles of conductive materials such as silver and copper and are basically just able to transport properties and maintain its electric conductivity. What's most important to know about this, I believe, is that it is a patented process from Hebrew University and is considered to be highly efficient and very clean and that NanoDimension believes that this innovative ink has the potential to accelerate both printing speeds and save the amount of ink actually being used in the 3D printing of electronics. The third product line worth mentioning in my opinion is their dielectric ink which is a proprietary ink that contains dielectric and dielectric materials that are not electrically conductive. The use of non-conductive ink is crucial in the production of multi-layer circuit boards, the PCBs we mentioned, as conducting layers that are placed on top of each other must be separated by a dielectric layer. They plan to commercialize both of these inks previously mentioned as supplementary products to their Dragon fly system. And lastly, in the way of software, they offer proprietary software, both the Dragonfly and the Switch, which are used to manage and design the file and printing process. The Switch software enables seamless transition into an additive manufacturing workflow, and the software enables the preparation of production files of printed electronic circuits using the Dragonfly system. Anytime I'm looking to invest in a potentially disruptive tech company, I want to know they have strong protection in the way of intellectual property. So with that in mind, let's dive right in for nano dimension. In the way of mechanical intellectual property, they have patents covering printhead regeneration system, printhead cleaning, and ink recycling systems, with three of them being granted in the U.S. Chemical IP includes two applications granted in the U.S., China, and South Korea, including ceramic inks, flexible inks, oxidation resistant conductive inks, as well as support inks. Thirdly, in the way of applications, they've patented various methods of printing additive manufacturing electronics, flexible printed circuits known as FPCs, and high density interconnect circuits known as HDIs. And in my opinion, you have what is the least important one, their industrial design patent, which covers the ornamental aspects of the printer and various printer components granted in the US, but that basically just sounds like don't copy the shell of our product. Nano Dimensions core business is nanotechnology, something I really don't understand as an individual investor, to be honest. But I do understand money, so let's see how well they've monetized operations to this point. Starting with revenues, in 2018, the company reported reported $5.1 million in revenue, growing 38% in 2019 to just over $7 million, but in 2020 we saw a decrease of over 50% to just under $3.5 million in total revenue. In the same time period, we compared the cost of revenue starting in 2018, the company reported $4.366 million in cost of revenues, growing 16%, which is only half as much as their revenue grew, to $5 million in 2019, but once again did decrease the similar amount, 54%, in 2020 due to the drop in revenue just to about $2.5 million. The end result saw a gross profit in 2018 of just a... Uh, $734,000, tripling in 2019 to just under $2 million, but it did decline once again last year in 2020, 50% to about a million dollars in gross profit. Additionally, this is probably worth mentioning, Nano Dimension does have exceptionally high SGNA cost. In 2018, Nano Dimension reported $7.2 million in SGA cost alone, growing 20% in 2019 to $8.661 million, and then went absolutely berserk in 2020 increasing 209% to $26.8 million in SGA cost while their revenue dropped 50%. Normally, I like to compare SGA cost as a percent of gross profit, but in the case of NNDM, SGNA costs are actually higher than their revenues. And although this is not uncommon in an early stage company, this needs to be said that this literally means the company is bleeding money out of their anus and almost definitely will need to raise capital. And the most common way to do that is share dilution. 
Evidently, they do have a strong technological portfolio, though they have struggled to monetize it. I wonder how does smart money feel about it? So looking at the top five holders on the street, we see that ARK Investment Management is the top holder at over 7% ownership. Moving on to Renaissance Technology is the second highest holder at almost 4%. State Street makes its regular visit back onto our channel at 1.63% ownership. Jane Street has 1.33% and Citadel Advisors, home of Kenny Griffin himself, Self owns 1.27% of total ownership. Total institutional ownership comes out to just over 19% though, so it's actually rather low. Though it should be said that institutional ownership value doesn't mean a ton on its own, so that's why we should turn to some SWOT analysis to measure the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats that we face as a potential investor into NNDM. Starting with strengths, we see that Nano Dimension defines themselves as being an industry first and the first to market. They have an intellectual property portfolio that is unrivaled, and they have complementary product lines and a strong integration strategy. In the way of weaknesses, they have declining revenues, high SG&A costs, and increasing R&D costs going forward. In the way of opportunities, they have numerous cross-selling options between product lines, but they will need to transition from low volume to mass production, and finally, they can expand upon their Internet of Thing offerings. In the way of threats, which are very real with them, they face the 3D printing industry not rapidly expanding. There could be an impact of new technology and new competitors, and frankly, their capital projection expenditures and liquidity doesn't look great to me. And with that in mind, let's get to my take and my position so we can wrap this thing up. Now my position is none. I've previously sold cash secure puts and covered calls running the wheel on the stock, but I do not currently have it in my portfolio. Nano Dimension may present potential investors with another classic high-risk, high-reward scenario. On the one hand, Nano Dimension alleges that they have a revolutionary, one-of-a-kind product with supplementary lines that could revolutionize the way many electronics are made utilizing key intellectual property. On the other hand, though, they have declining revenues, questionable growth, and profitability statistics that make this almost untouchable to the fundamentally aligned investor. Overall though, my opinion is that the 3D printing field is super exciting and presents many opportunities for growth, though it may become hard to pinpoint the contenders from the pretenders. When investing in early stage companies, what I try to do is envision the most likely path to profitability, and for nano dimension, I just don't know what that is. To be clear, I'm not saying that they can't or won't. I'm actually saying that my peanut-sized brain cannot imagine the point in which NMDM gets there because I don't even really understand what the company does to be honest. So for that reason, and that reason alone, in which it does not fit my own personal investment style, I will not be adding a long position into my portfolio. But as just one final reminder to everyone, I am an individual investor, I am not your financial advisor. This should not be considered financial advice. My name is Dave and this has been The Market Board.